with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations let's go to God in prayer Father God in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you God we honor you Lord, we praise you. God, we magnify you. Lord, we lift you up, Father God. We say hallowed to your name. You are the great majesty. You are the great God. You are the great King. We've come this morning to make a joyful noise. A joyful shout. A joyful adoration unto you, Father God. For Lord, you're worthy. You are God. God, you're good. Lord, you are God. Lord, you're merciful. You are God. And for that, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we lift your name. We magnify you before men. God, we honor you today for just being God. Lord, we realize that you are holy. We are unholy. You are selfless. We are selfful. Well, Lord, we come asking you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Forgive us for ignoring you, God. Forgive us, Lord, for not carrying on the way you would have us to. Lord, we thank you for forgiving us. Lord, we ask you to bless us in this room. Bless us on this telecast. Bless us, Father God, that all men will see you and look to you as the only true God, the only living God. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us to lose ourselves in the service. That, Father God, we will walk with you. We will humble ourselves before you. And we will bless your holy name. Father, we ask you, Father God, to take control of this service. That old habits will be rolled away. Old burdens will be thrown away. That we will be better at one o'clock than we were at 10 o'clock. That life will continue to roll on just a little while longer. That we will glorify your name. And we will serve you the battles of our days. Lord, we ask you to speak through your word. Bless your word to fall on good soul. Bless your word to convict. 
Bless your word, Father God, too. Come, give us confidence. And bless your word, Father God, that your word will go forward. That men, women, boys, and girls will honor you as God. Lord, we thank you now. We bless you now. We thank you for the victory in our lives. We thank you for the victory through your word. And we praise you, Lord. We magnify you just for who you are and for your word. Lord, bless us, Father God, that we will sing unto you. We will praise you. And we will honor you, Father God. That, God, you will hear from us on earth. And, Father God, you will bless us from heaven. Lord, we ask you to bless us with your greatest blessings. Even during this period. And, Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. 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 Amen.
Chapters 5, the verses are 25 to 31. I want to thank Pastor Eric Belt for falling right into the midst of it, of this series on last week. I want to thank him all the way from Kansas City, Missouri. He, he just wrecked the place. I want to thank my elder brother for coming by and preaching for us, even on Last week. Go ahead and let everybody come in. We're at Daniel chapter 5, verses 25 to 31. Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5, verses 25 through 31. Daniel chapter 5, verses 25 through 31. When you found it, you will discover these words. And this is the inscription that was written. 
Mine Mine Titiki of Carson, Parson. Some versions say Parson, some say you Parson. This is the interpretation of each word. Mine, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tike, you have been weighed in the balances and found warning. Pire, which is also Parson, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command that clothed and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. And Darius, the Mede, received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. I want to talk about God is still writing. God is still writing. Warning, warning, warning. These were the words of the news reporters this week in the state of Texas. Warning, if you don't have to go out, stay at home. Warning, there is black ice on the road. Warning, don't go down the road. It looks like water. But it's really frozen ice. Warning, the ice on the road has blended in with the black top. Warning, the ice on the road has blended in with the cement. Warning, don't go that way. Stay at home if you can. Some of us heeded these warnings. Others of us decided that we could make it anyhow. Cars piled up, trucks piled up, trucks turned over, one after the other. Lives were lost. People had busted pipes. They had frozen bodies. They sit in traffic for 13 to 16 hours. Even after the warning. I want to tell you, God is still right. When we look at how you can carry a gun, but you can't get a driver's license. All right, now. Say that. Yeah. I want to tell you, warning God is still right. Yeah. When we see our nation going more toward devilishness than godliness, God is still right. I wish, I wish I could give you some good news this morning and I will close with some good news. But the fact of the matter is, Pastor Beth handled chapter 4 last week. Right. And chapter 5 just happened to come after chapter 4. Right. I was so excited I was going to rush to chapter 6 and tell you about Daniel in the lion's den. But I could not skip over chapter 5. Right. The subject matter this morning is God is still right. God is still giving us another chance. God is still on the throne. God is still saying to us, don't go that way. There's ice on the road. Don't go that way. There's a wreck down the road. Yes, yes. But some of us are still doing our own thing. Doing it our own way. I was just so excited to get to chapter 6 and to tell you how God shut the, the lion's mouth. Daniel couldn't fight and how the lions couldn't bite. I was excited about it. Right, right. But in between bad news and good news, there's some more bad news. Pastor right. Beth coming well on last week. He talked about chapter 4 and he talked about the fact that Nebuchadnezzar called Daniel to his side. 
than to tell me what the meaning of my second dream. And this time, King Nebuchadnezzar decided to tell him his dream. And he wanted Daniel to interpret the dream. Daniel said, O king, long live the king. I honor you, king. It says to young folk, when you're pulled over, when you're pulled over by somebody in authority, make sure you give honor and respect. He says, long live the king. King, I wish I could tell you some good news. But Daniel chapter 5 told the king that the dream that you've had represents you. He went on to tell the king, king, you're going to be out in the field eating like oxen. He says, king, your, your throne will be no more. He says, king, you will eat the grass of the field. He said, king, you'll be looking up at the moon just like the wild animals. He says, oh, king, now let me just share with you, king, if you don't turn back to God, then, king, you're going to have some serious problems. Oh, yeah. Then he moves. After this comes through, he moves to chapter 5. And there's another king on the scene. Oh, yeah. This king, Belshazzar, is on the scene. Yes, Belshazzar is on the scene and King Nebuchadnezzar was a good king. But Daniel prophesied in, in chapters 1, 2, and 3 that there will be two kings that follow you that are not going to be good kings. So he says to him, uh, you, cannot, you cannot trust your power. You must trust in the power of the Almighty God. He moves to chapter 5. When he deals with chapter 5, the king sees writing on the wall. Yes, the king looks and other folks sees this writing and the Bible says the king sees this writing also. And when he sees this writing on the wall, he called for his astrologers. He called for his prognosticators. He called for his soothsayers and they couldn't tell him the interpretation of the writing on the wall. So then the Bible teaches that a lady comes and says, and in some version it says that it was the mother-in-law of King Darius. Others say it was the queen herself. It says to us today, men, sometimes you ought to listen to a woman. Uh, Ooh, good God Almighty. When she's walking with the Lord, when she is, has contact with God, you better listen. This woman, this woman comes to the king and say, King, respect unto you, king. But there is one of those Hebrew boys that was brought over into captivity, over into Babylon. They were brought over into captivity, and there is one called Daniel. Daniel himself was a good interpreter for King Nebuchadnezzar. I just want to let you know, sometimes history will prove itself over and over again. Yeah, yeah. My next point to you today is, many times people will see your reputation of the past and call on that great reputation to do good things one more time. Yeah. And then again, I need to let you know that God wants to use you and bless you regardless of what neighborhood you grew up in. Yeah. Regardless if you've got two parents or not. Well, everybody got a daddy, whether he's on the scenes or not. God wants to use you whether you got the best education or not. God wants to use you whether or not you grew up in, in a log cabinet or in a palace. God wants to use you. God uses Daniel again. He comes to King Darius. He interprets his dream. And that's where we pick up in verse number 17. God will give us, I'll give you seven points and I'm done. All the rest of it just add in. Number one, God will give us a way out of sin. Amen. I want to tell you today, God, you don't, you don't have to sin. You don't have to go down that road. You don't have to continue in sin. God will give you a way out of sin. 
Paul says, and, and, and Paul says in, in Corinthians, he says to the Corinthian church that God will provide a way of escape for you. That's why I told you on previous messages, I said to you that I don't follow the crowd, so when I get in trouble, it's all on me. Don't fall to peer pressure, and don't fall to peer pressure. Make sure you walk with the Lord for yourself. My first point is God will give you a way out. Look at verse 17. Daniel answered and said to the king, see, the king has promised him rewards. The king has promised him gold. The king has promised him stature and influence. But Daniel says to the king, keep your gifts, O king. He says to the king, king, go ahead and keep your gifts or give them to somebody else who needs those gifts. He said, I don't need your gifts, king. Go ahead and give them to somebody else. But he promised him that if you interpret my dream, I will clothe you with purple. And you will have a gold chain around your neck. And I will give you the third seat in the kingdom. And you will prove to be somebody. God will give you a way out. So Daniel tells the king, I don't want your stuff. But the God I serve. The God I serve will give me the pleasure. Look at verse 18. O king, the most high God gave King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, which is your predecessor, gave your predecessor, your father in his kingdom, majesty, glory, and honor. And because of the majesty that God gave him, all the people, all the nations, all the languages trembled and feared before him. God is giving this king a way out. He says, he goes on to say in verse 19, and because of the majesty, he gave the languages of people, and then whosoever he wished to execute, guess what he did? He executed them. Whosoever he wanted to let live, he allowed them to live. What Daniel was telling the king is, is king, that your predecessor had great power. Your predecessor was able to do some things that God allowed him to do, but he had to depend on God. My mm -hmm. next point is, God is able to handle the powerful. Mm -hmm. You think your, your boss is powerful? Mm -hmm. You think your homeowners association has power? You think your friend has power? If they victimize you and oppress you, God is able to handle the powerful. God is able to handle them. Look what he says. Look what he says. He, he says they trembled at him. He says that, and whoever he wished to keep alive, whomever he wished to set up high, his wish became true. Verse number 20. But when his heart was lifted up, in his spirit hardened with pride, he was disposed from the kingly throne. Mm -hmm. And they took his glory from him. Wow. I'm telling you, God knows to handle the powerful. Not only can God handle the powerful, he can handle the rich. Those in legislation that is, that is, is ushering into this world see it. Those who are executives that are doing their own bidding and, and making sure that you are kept held down, God can handle the rich, the famous, and the powerful. God can handle it. God has a way of dealing with folk when they deal with the saints of God in the wrong manner. I said God has a way of dealing with them. God has a way of dealing with them. You make sure you are not one of them. Because sooner or later, God will deal with you also. The text declares that he dealt with King Nebuchadnezzar. So he reminds, he reminds King Darius, you know what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. His heart was hardened. His heart was turned away from God. I want to say to you today, make sure your heart is turned toward God. 
Make sure your heart is turned toward God in such a way that God can move on you. And when God moves, you move just like God moves. For one of these days, somebody is going to be lifted up in pride. And God is going to have to bring them down. When we look at Acts chapter 12, when we examine Acts chapter 12, we find Herod there. The Bible says, right around verse number 21 is the beginning of it. And the Bible says that Herod stood up on a set day and he gave a great oration. Yes. He gave a great speech until the people's minds were blown. The people said, this is not the voice of a man, but this is the voice of a God. Next few verses declare that the worm came and ate him alive until he died. And the next verse declares because he did not give God the glory. All right. yeah. Let me tell you, God will handle the powerful. Yeah. Yeah. God will handle the rich and the famous. My third point to you today is man has power, but God has all power. I said man has power. They, they have power. See, we think and we have thought for many years that slavery was over. But now slavery takes place with the stroke of a pen and in the key of a computer. And they hold you back because you walk around here with your head in the cloud talking about what they owe you. Let me just share with you today. God is almighty. God is all powerful. Don't depend on your boss. Please don't depend on the governor. Don't depend on the president. Depend on God almighty. Because even though man is powerful, God is all powerful. It is called omnipotent. He has all power. He has all strength. He has all might. Trust in the God who is all powerful. He is omnipotent. Man has power, but God is all power. It goes on to say, because King Nebuchadnezzar did not give God the glory, because King Nebuchadnezzar got high and lifted up, because King Nebuchadnezzar got lifted up in pride, God had to bring him down. Yeah. Yeah. I oftentimes tell this story. When Hurricane Ike hit, we all were standing in line at City Hall to get water and ice. Brother in front of me decided he was going to turn around and, and just tell me what he was thinking. Brother said to me, I was supposed to be in this line. So, well, brother, why you don't supposed to be in this line? I made fifty thousand dollars a year. I don't supposed to be in this line. I was supposed to be in this line. Oh, I'm so glad I'm the one that was standing behind him. Since he chose to tell me a piece of his mind, I had to tell him a piece of mine. I had to make him realize right then and there, your fifty thousand dollars has no value if the bank is closed. Your $50,000 have no value if your debit card doesn't work. Your $50,000 has no value if you don't have a place to go spend your $50,000. Matter of fact, you in this line, just like I'm in this line, because none of our money makes a difference. We're in this line because God saw fit. But Hurricane had to come to Houston. Looking for Tina, wipe the place out and move on. I said to him, matter of fact, brother, in the 21st century, $50,000 ain't a lot of money to be bragging about. I mean, he's standing in the line talking about he has no business in the line. And then go announce to the public he made $50,000. And the people in front of him and, and me behind him, all of us laughed. Because he made $50,000. He thought that he didn't deserve to be in this line. I said, well, get out then. And see if your $50,000 a year will get you some ice and water. This is the only place in town, brother. The line is wrapped around the building. So what my point is, you can get lifted up in pride if you want to. You can depend on your money if you want to. 
You can depend on your 403B, your 401K. You can depend on the stock market if you want to. God knows how to shut it completely down. And let me tell you, he shut it down. We, 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 we run around here talking about what we drive, what we ride, how we lean in. In my day, we would say it like this. We would say, sunroof top, diamond in the back, digging the scene with the gangster lean, TV antenna. And Joker didn't have no TV. They just had a fake antenna on the back side. <laughs> TV antenna in the back. Gangster white wall. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> we have to understand. Then if we're going to be blessed, and we're going to be blessed, really blessed, we got to be blessed by God. We can't brag about what we have. We need to give glory to God. That's what Daniel did. Daniel gave glory to God for everything that he had. When the king tried to give him something, he said, no, I don't need that. I got God. When the king tried to give him a position, I don't really need that. I have God. But let me just stop and let you know that when God, when you honor him, God will motivate you and God will promote you when men look like they don't want to promote you. Is there anybody in the house other than me that's been passed over for promotion? Is there anybody in the house because other than me who have been looked down and my skin has become my sin? Let me tell you, just keep praising him. Just keep walking with him. Just keep singing unto him. God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. In spite of our enemies, in spite of our friends, in spite of who loses our attention and whose attention we lose, God has a way of blessing us. My next point is God will humble everybody. It's in the text. God, God has a way of humbling everybody. You can brag about stuff. Here, Daniel. Daniel is having total recall. And as he has total recall, he's reminding King Darius that, that your predecessor had to go out in the field. He had to eat with the animals. He, your predecessor had to go out in the field. And your predecessor had to do from heaven drop on his head. Matter of fact, your predecessor had to go out in the field. And his, his fingernails grew like claws from birds. Your predecessor had to go out in the field. And he drew, he, his hair grew like the feathers of the eagle. And he reminds King Darius, it wasn't until your predecessor turned back to God that he was able to live like a human being once again. You see, we think because of what we have, we think of because of where we've been. We really got it going on. We think because of what we wear. We really got it going on. Alan Weaker usually does sports for ABC, but, but this week he was out on the ice steel road. Begging men, and women, boys and girls. He says, stay at home. It's dangerous out here. Stay at home. He said, we get paid to be out here and to tell you to stay at home. And to tell you how bad it is. And then when he got back in the car, the rest of the broadcast ends with him saying, look like Houstonians really listen this time. <laughs> they really listen. The roads are clear. Let me just share with you, God has a way of humbling everybody. I see a picture of a little girl who came to summer enrichment camp. And she had white spots all over her blouse. And another little girl saw her and said, girl, what is that stuff on your blouse? Why, why you got to have that stuff on your blouse? Get away from me. I had to remind her, we don't bully folk here. We welcome them here. Because it's just a matter of time. Before you can have no clothes. And you're talking about spots on her clothes. God has a way of humbling all of us. And he will humble us in a manner that we really can't afford. You see men, men climb ladders. And the devil helps to feed them as they climb the ladder. 
But God waits just till we get to the tip top of the ladder where everybody we abuse to get up the ladder can see us have a great fall. And then the devil comes and snatches the rug out from under the ladder. And we become like Humpty Dumpty. Have a great fall. All the king men and none of the king lost horsemen could put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But I know somebody. And I know somebody. Daniel said that he's the most high God. And he can put him together. Now why would Daniel have to tell King Darius this? The reason why he had to tell him this is because Daniel had seen what King Darius was doing. He had gathered all of his concubines together. All of his governors and friends, he brought them together. All the big time statesmen, he brought them together. And they took the articles that came over uh, from Jerusalem and, and they began to, to make them and drink from them and they began to celebrate out of God. God's made of wood. God's made of metal. God's made of stuff. Right. Let me just share with you today. God is not pleased when we put stuff before him. All right. All right. But it doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter if it's your spouse, don't put them before God. It doesn't matter if it's if it's your house, your car, your, your stuff, don't put it before God. Because God has a way of snatching it all out from under you. So Daniel says to him, You know the story. Then he wants Daniel to interpret this dream. The writing on the wall. I'm telling you, God is still writing. The writing on the wall in verses 25 to 31, Daniel addresses the writing. He says, meaning, meaning twice. He says, your days to your kingdom are nothing. You can do whatever you want to do. You can brag about your stuff if you want to, but your days are not. Yes, he says, he says to us today, he says to us that regardless of what we have accomplished, this stuff is temporary. This stuff will fall short. And he repeats himself by saying, meaning, meaning, he says, your days are not. You may have that job now, but today's a number. You know, in, employers don't receive people and treat people like they used to. I mean, they used to give you retirement and pension. They used to give you immediately two weeks of vacation. They used to tell you, go home and take care of your family, whatever you need to do, and then we'll, we'll find a way to pay you. But now you can give them 30 good people. You can give them 40 good years. Yeah. And they'll tell you you're too old now. Yeah. We can't deal with you now. They will bring in somebody under you that has never ever seen what you have done. All right. Don't even know the ins and the outs. But they don't have time for you anymore. Your days are not yeah. Your days, your days. He says, King, your days are numbered. Matter of fact, he says, not only is your kingdom numbered, your kingdom is finished. It's over. You've done. You're washed up. Because you worship idol gods. And you will not give God the glory. I told you my first point was, God will always give you a way out. We need to take that way out. And when we're looking to get into sin and we have secret sins in the depths of our heart, we need to be praying, God, give me a way out. Right. In other words, you need to be praying, God, rescue me from me. Yeah. 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 Because I know how to mess it up. You know, sisters really know how to do it. They know how to roll their neck. <laughs> roll their eyes. Step back on one leg, put their hands on their hip and really tell you what they want to tell you. And I've been waiting all these years to let you know this. God is not pleased 
when we do not represent him well. Amen. And then know how to hold it deep down within and all of a sudden they'll throw it on you. I don't love you no more. I never did. I just couldn't up with you. God is not pleased when we meet, mistreat his people. God is not pleased when we don't have harmony and unity. God, what, what does it look like? What does it look like? What does it look like? Sister Davis, the next best thing that happened to me. Jesus is the best thing. Somebody said he's the best thing. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. What does it look like with me talking crazy to Sister Davis? And she's the next best thing. As a matter of fact, if I chose her, it's on me. Matter of fact, in the words of Miles Monroe, if if she gains weight, it's my place to help her out. Yeah. Yeah. If she gets too skinny, it's my place to help her out. Yeah. Because God has given her to me right. to protect her, yeah. to be the priest of the household, yeah. and to make sure she goes before God, and to make sure I'm the one that takes her there. And here I am talking crazy to her. I must be out of my mind. I must have really lost it. And then the folk that do begin, it ain't gonna happen. Listen to that. It's girl power around here. I mean girl power. That's why we need some men in here. It is girl power around here. We ain't putting up that. But that ain't going on, right, Brother Mouth? They, they ain't putting up that. But if I have chosen her. If I have prayed for her, if she has been consistent in walking with the Lord, I, I, I asked my mama every now and then, you think, I, I said, Mama, I think I, I better keep her. You better. You ain't going to find nothing else like that. You ain't find nobody like that. I mean, she goes on a rant. And then my auntie calls all the way from Jackson, Mississippi. Girl, is he treating you right? As if I'm a villain or something. As if I, I lost my mind. The fact of the matter is, we have to support each other and be there for each other. We have to have communion with each other. We have to walk together with each other. The text declares, if you walk with the Lord, there won't be a problem with walking with each other. When, when things are going awry in your neighborhood, in your house, in your sporting events, it's because somebody has gotten out of touch with God. And you need to ask yourself, have I gotten out of touch with God? Has God moved or did I move? Let me just tell you the answer, even before you ask that question. God didn't move. I'm telling you, you move. It, it doesn't matter how sanctimonious you are. It doesn't matter how saved you've been and how long you've been there. God did not move. You moved. We got to get along with Almighty God. He says, meaning, meaning, God has numbered your kingdom, he's numbered your days, and it is done. It is finished. The, the, you, you might as well go on down the road. He says, Elijah, at the brook calls to read, he says, the brook has dried up. When the brook dries up, Elijah, it's time to move on. When the brook dries up, it's time to get out of there. When the brook dries up, it's time to leave it alone. And he says, teacher, you have been weighed in the balances and you have not measured up. You are found warning. God is, God is weighing us in the balances. See, the problem is we are comparing ourselves to other people. Stop comparing yourself to other people and start comparing yourself to Jesus Christ. Because when you compare yourself to Jesus Christ, you will realize if there will have to be no announcement, you will realize that I'm falling short. Compare yourself to Jesus. And see where you measure up. Because when you don't measure up, God is able to strip you of your blessing. He says, you've been weighed in the balances and you've been found wanting. In other words, you've not measured up. That's why when we pray, we ought to admit to God. 
God, I messed up. God, I've fallen short. I remember Mary, Mary Lee Clark was my, one of my babysitters growing up, and she used to teach us Bible classes uh, before we go to bed at night. And I remember sitting on the, on the side of the bed, and she kneeling down on the side of the bed, and she said, every day of your life, before you go to sleep, you ask the Lord, the Lord, have mercy on me. She said, because sometime during the day, you have messed up. Sometime during the day, you thought something, you said something, you act some kind of way. And see, children today tell the parents what to do. Y'all know that, right? You see, you couldn't clear your throat in our house. Because clearing your throat was very disrespectful. You couldn't say, oh, I mean, that, that was very disrespectful. Now children that flat toe, flat toe, to toe in their pants and said, look, old lady, look, old man, go to the house. Sit down somewhere. Daddy had a statement, and I'm sure some other parents had a statement. I brought you into this world, and I'll tell you, I'll take you right out of here. And guess what? We grew up here and there from day one. I mean, before we got one year old, and we believed it. And even when daddy got sick, and he couldn't do things physically. We were there to shelter him, to protect him, because we grew up with respect for him. All right. People talk about they let their children make their own decisions when they get teenagers. Mm -hmm. April 15th, 2022, I'll be 59 years old. And, and when it comes to mama, I still can't make no any decisions. <laughs> when it comes to mama, she, she comes to my house and tells me what to do at my house. It's because of the respect that we have grown up with and we maintain that respect over the years. God is still writing and when we see disrespectful children, it's because God is still warning us. God is still writing to us and telling us that it's coming to an end. Yeah. Then he says, you've been waiting in the balance. Finally he says, Perez. Or Parson. He says, your kingdom has been divided. It has been given to the Medes and the Persians. God then caused Daniel to be blessed. It says that Daniel had been clothed with purple. He, they put a, a gold chain around his neck and they proclaim concerning him that he is the third ruler of the kingdom. My next point to you today is God uses ungodly people to bless the God. God has a way of blessing the godly through ungodly people. See, you walk around pushing ungodly people away. You just keep being kind to them. You just keep being loving to them. God is using ungodly people to bring your blessings there. One preacher, one preacher decided since she won that money, by way of gambling, I can't accept that's dirty money. I wish he had been a friend of mine. I would have told him. Money we receive every Sunday is dirty money. We, we, we receive prostitute money, gambling money, dope dealers money. We receive it every Sunday. That's why we said, Lord, bless it in the name of Jesus. And we just accept it and go down the road. We ain't having any business asking where it came from. We just bless it. Lord, we thank you for it. A few weeks after that, a few months after that, there was a fire at the church and he needed that money. Uh, Let me share it with you. You can't run away ungodly people. The reason why we are the church is so we can be here for the unchurched. We can be here for the unsaved and we can be here for the unchristian. God uses ungodly people to bless you. God uses them. Finally, it says, in verse number 30 and 31, that very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. God promised, God promises will come true. God's, God's promises will come true. And my final point today, wait on God to handle your issues. Just wait on it. Just, just wait on just, just be patient with God. Just wait on Yeah, Big Mama would say, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Just wait on him. 
Stop fighting a fleshly fight. Just wait on him. Paul says this warfare is not a physical warfare. This warfare is a spiritual warfare. We have to take up spiritual arms. Just wait on him. Yes, wait on him. And if you wait on him, he'll help you. <laughs> All your issues. Yeah. If you wait on God, God can do more for you than you can do for him. Yeah. Just wait on him. Yeah. Isaiah was here. Isaiah was saying that God will, if you wait on him, God will allow you to mount up with wings like eagles. Yeah. God will allow you to run and not get weary. Yeah. He said the young folk run and get weary. <laughs> He said, but if you wait on it, he will renew you like eagles. Are you going to wait on him today? Will you stand and wait on God? God is still writing. Let God still write what God is writing. And God is taking care of our enemies on every hand. Jesus is our example. Jesus waited on it. He waited down through 42 generations. He came on down through, through a place called Bethlehem of Judea. He waited through 42 generations, I tell you. Man's lives were messed up. We were full of sin. We loved the sin. Our sin nature had taken over. Jesus just waited to the appointed time. God rolled himself up in a body. Got off in Bethlehem of Judea. Yes, he did. And he didn't have hotel sofa tail either. He didn't have holiday inn. He got off in a place where there was no inn. He was born in a stable. Yeah. Jesus the Christ waited on him. He walked these mundane shores waiting on God. He stayed in prayer. He walked in prayer. He lived by prayer. He waited on him. When he got to uh, the city man, he knew his enemy was coming to arrest him. He waited on God. He didn't even put up a fight. He gave up, didn't say a the word. They took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. He waited on God. When you wait on him, they took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They came up with a kangaroo court. They falsely accused him. When you wait on God, wait on God. God is still writing. And in his writing, he's still saying warning, warning, warning. He took a tree, I tell you. Marched up Calvary's hill. He died that day. Mean men killed my Lord. Mean men killed my Jesus. Mean men killed him. He waited on God. He didn't give up. He didn't come down from the cross. He just kept waiting on God. They killed him. Yes. It became midnight. At midday, he waited on God. Hallelujah to the Lord. One centurion soldier cried out, Surely, this must be the Son of God. The earth come my heaven that he did. Begin to reel and rock like a drunken man. Jesus was hanging from the cross that day. Yeah, the earth quaked that day. And yeah, the veil of the temple was rent. From top to bottom. He was waiting on God. So now we don't have to go to the preacher to get our prayer through. We don't have to go to the priest to get our prayer through. We can come boldly before the Lord. Just for our sin. The bell was ringing from top to bottom. Jesus was waiting on God. Yeah, the bell of the temple was ringing. He gave up the ghost. He died on the cross. On a stub hill called Calvary. They took him off the cross. Laid him in a bottle of tomb. It was a bottle of tomb, I tell you. It was borrowed because he didn't need it too long. It was a bottle of tomb because early that Thursday morning, he got up with all power. He didn't get up right away. He waited all day Friday. He waited all night Friday. He waited all day Saturday. He waited all night Saturday. But on that Sunday morning, that was a really little rocket. In the grave, he got up with our power. He got up with all power. In heaven and earth in his hand. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God is still right. He's still warning us that he's going to give us a way out. He's still warning us that he can handle the power. He's still warning us that man has power, but God has all power. He's still warning us that he can humble everybody. He's still telling us
God's promises will always come true. And he guarantees us, if we wait on him, he will give us the victory. The victory is in Jesus. The door of the church is open. The invitation is at stake. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't wait till next Sunday. Next Sunday is not promised to us. All we have is right now. The door is open. If you never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to introduce him to you today. Would you just bow your head with me and invite him into your life? Just repeat after me. Say these words. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe that you pray this prayer. You're now born again. When you leave earth, you have a right to go to heaven. You have a seat reserved for you, a spot reserved for you in heaven. There are others of us who struggle every day with sin. I want to pray with you and pray for you. Father God, we thank you now for those of us who struggle. Those of us who want to say the wrong thing. Act the wrong way. Treat others the wrong way. Lord, forgive us. Those of us who have turned our face and turn our hearts against you. God, forgive us. Now we ask you, Father God, to allow us to repent. Allow us to be restored. To be rededicated. To be recommitted. We thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who are in between church homes. Or don't have a church home. I recommend this one. The New Beginning Church. Where Jesus is the center of attention. Where Jesus is the main attraction. Where you come. Those of you who are listening. We would love to have you a part of the New Beginning Church. Where the word of God is preached uncompromisingly. Where you can get to know Jesus. And grow. In your spirit man. If this is you. Please inbox us and let us know that you want to join the New Beginning Church. If this is you and you receive Jesus Christ, let us know so we can rejoice with you. If you want to be a member, let us know and we welcome you to this family of family. I really want to know. I really got to know.
Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We come now, Father God, lifting up those on our prayer list. We lift up Willie Owen Jr. We lift up Sister Lydia Harrington. We lift up the Henrique and Sovian family. We lift up Gregory Tillman. We lift up Stella Collins. We ask you to bless them as only you can. Heal and touch, Father God. Strengthen and deliver. Bless, Father God, that they will stand and proclaim your goodness and glorify your name. Say, Jesus, and we pray. Amen and thank God. Are you saved? Are you saved? I really want to know. I really need to know. Hallelujah. Well, we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the mighty and the awesome and the amazing God. It is now offering time. It is time to prepare our offering for the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a good place to tell. We want to thank God for this privilege, this honor, this great opportunity to give to him. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. There are two envelopes. The first envelope is white and blue. It's for tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. The second envelope is white and red. It is for the pastor's love offering. Please, ma'am, please, sir, take one offering, envelope or two of your choice, and you can choose to give unto the new beginning church. Raise your hand high, and you will be served. For those of you, those of you who are giving electronically, you can do so by giving to Zell. Our Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is as we lift Jesus, he draws all men unto himself. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zell account. If you want to operate by mail, you can mail your offering, your tithes, your giving to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Bless him, bless him. Bless his holy name.
blessings from the Lord. Lord, we ask you to keep them in their journey. Walk with them, Father God. Bless them, Father God, that they will be about your business. Impress upon their lives right now, Father God, to give their focus to Jesus the Christ. Bless their parents, bless their family members, that they will lead God and direct them in the right order, in the right way. Father God, we ask you to bless the household, that this household will be given unto you. And Lord, as these boys run forward, bless them, Father God, to be examples to their peers, 
of what godliness is all about. So in the strong, mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank God. We thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for Drew. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his godly example. We thank you, Lord, for blessing him, Father. Now, Lord, we ask you to continue to walk with him. Continue to bless him, bless him to be a blessing to this family. And Lord, we ask you to lead God and direct him, Father God, that he will know you as Lord, that he will honor you as the mighty king, that he will walk with you. And that, Father God, he will be an example to his peers. Lord, we ask you to make him a missionary, cross-culture, Father God, that he will minister to many women, men, boys, and girls, and that he, Father God, will be called according to your blessing him. And Lord, we ask you to keep him from all hurt, harm, and danger. Keep his mind and keep his focus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Bless you, man. Bless you, man. Give it up here. Let me see. Give it a man handshake. Okay. Who's the pop the rock show on this one? Let's go to the diary. 
prayer. Father God, we thank you now. God, we thank you for these men and children. Thank you, Lord, that you are growing up men in the Word, men in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for blessings, conditions to be as they are. Now, Lord, we ask you to make them godly examples. Father God, we ask you to bless them to minister to others. We pray, Father God, that they, they will be seen in the neighborhood and people will see God through them. We pray, Father God, that you keep them safe in all they're going. We pray for their intelligence and their commitment to you. We pray, Father God, that you keep them safe in and out of school. Keep them safe at home. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to give them a hunger and a thirst for your word, your will, and your way. We pray for this family. We pray for this mother and father. We ask you, Father God, to keep them in your will and in your word. That these children will impact this world in a way that we can never dream of. Take them around the world and bring them back. That they, Father God, will meet people and turn their lives toward Jesus. And Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. She's going to read uh, what everybody's certificate says. Certificate of Blessing. This is a certified that Nasir Francois Fusilier was dedicated to the Lord on the sixth day of February in the year 2022. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22 6. New Beginning Church, Houston, Texas. Matthew A. Davis, Pastor.
need to sound like sound at the end of the church service, okay? Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sister Joseph. Sister Joseph, appreciate it. Thank you so much. here today. One more thank our visitors for coming. Amen. Amen. On a cold, freezing day, Sister Joseph knows how to pack our church out when our members decide to stay at home. Amen. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you for giving me the privilege to be a part of your children's lives. And I pray God's blessed, best blessing upon each of them. Amen. We have Sunday school at 9 o'clock a.m. every Sunday here at the New Beginning Church. We have um, a Bible study on Wednesday night at 7.15 sharp. We have choir rehearsal at 8.30 uh, Wednesday night uh, p.m. And also we have worship service, a service that you have come to today, one service all day long at 10.30 uh, a.m. Please come back and visit us. Please come back and be a part. If you uh, gave me a card, my first prayer always is, I hope I can understand your right. Amen. Secondly, uh, I would appreciate it if you put your phone number on there so I can call you and see how your experience was here at the New Beginning Church. Amen. So again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a part of our service. We'll continue to pray for you. You continue to pray for us. Amen. Am I missing anything? Is there anything... I'm missing. Yeah, I'm missing a whole, a whole. I'm missing church. Good God Almighty. It is now time for communion. It is time to partake in what the Lord has promised us that He would allow us to do. So it is time for communion.
And then he took the cup and he held the cup and said, This is the blood that is shed for you for the remission of your sins. And he said, We be all of it. First impression.
sent with his disciple, he took the bread, he broke it, he blessed it, he ate all of it. Then he held up a cup. He said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Drink me all of it.